This paper was given to the American Physical Society March meeting in 2021. Shekman claimed long-range order with no translational symmetry, but we will demonstrate to you block-wave translational symmetry about the lattice parameter multiplied by tau to the power m. So what's the problem? Aluminium-6 manganese melt spun condenses to more than one phase. The second phase is crystalline. It follows Bragg's law, n lambda equals 2d sine theta, where n, the order, is integral, periodic, harmonic. Here it is, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In this instance, odd orders are suppressed by structure factors. The quasi-crystal is in a different ballpark. N is equal to 0, 1, tau, tau squared, tau cubed, tau to the fourth. It's irrational and it's geometric. It's aperiodic. It's anharmonic. How in heaven and earth does it diffract with a sharp diffraction pattern? I'm going to begin with structure and indexation. Go on to the quasi-structure factor and metric then analyze it and find the irrational residue and illustrate it with the quasi-block wave, digitized and harmonized, and finally the lattice parameter, measured, analyzed, verified, complete. Manganese is a small atom with a strong scattering factor. It's surrounded by 12 aluminum atoms, very tightly packed. And notice this feature of the structure, normal to the five-fold axis, is a circle of five aluminum atoms, two circles of five aluminum atoms. We'll see those again. And the unit cell are edge sharing, not face sharing, so that the stoichiometry is aluminium six manganese. They cluster to form a hierarchic cluster. Notice that the edge width of the unit icosahedral unit cell stretches to tau squared in the icosahedral cluster and to tau to the power 4 in the supercluster, etc., etc. It's infinitely extensible, logarithmically, periodic, with a stretching factor tau squared. Here they are, manganese, the unit cell, the cluster on two circles, and the... Uh, a supercluster with five clusters on one circle because the specimen is uh, sufficiently thin. This image is by Bessel and Peng. Uh, Steinhardt has a similar image. There are others too. And here's a model of the uh, uh, supercluster which you just saw with uh, five clusters in a circle. The cluster has two planes, so it looks like tenfold, but the uh, supercluster has one plane, and that's why it's fivefold. On the right is a supercluster ordered two, mapping manganese. Let's think about the diffraction. In crystals, the atom exists on planes, the planes are spaced by a periodic interplanar spacing D. And so the, look at the red rays, the difference in path length is equal to lambda, the wavelength of the radiation. And uh, look at the green waves, the, the difference is 2 lambda. That's crystal diffraction, that's Bragg diffraction. The quasi-crystal is another ballpark. There are multiple interplanar space, spacings. So all the orders diffract at once. If you want to know how the phases add, you have to calculate the structure factor because it's independent of theta. We'll come back and calculate theta right at the end. So uh, uh, the, we, we're going to calculate the diffraction properties with the structure factor. But first, we have to correct the indexation. Here's a stereogram of the principal axes of the icosahedral structure, normal to the principal axes of the diffraction planes. And they are all three-dimensional, geometric, simple and complete. 
dimension should not be multiplied without necessity. The manifold is clearly R3. There's no Bragg diffraction. So how do we calculate the structure factor? In the crystal, we project each atom side R onto a selected plane normal H and sum the cosine phases. That gives the amplitude for the selected Bragg wave. For the quasi-crystal, we make two adjustments. Because we have sharp diffraction but multiple despacings, we include a, a, co a coherence factor. We're going to derive this in detail as we go along. Secondly, because our unit cell is not periodically repeating, we have to sum over the whole quasi-crystal, and we have to do this iteratively. The QSF, quasi-structure factor, for a supercluster order P, is equal to the QSF for order P minus 1, multiplied by this function for uh, the phases based on the uh, stretching factor. And what is the answer? There is no Bragg diffraction. If there were Bragg diffraction, it would occur on the ordinate axis where CS equals 1. But when we scan CS numerically, we discover the quasi-Bragg condition for these beams that we started with. And it's the same condition for all the beams in Shetman's data. And the divergence from the Bragg condition is this factor 0.894. And it's because it's a, a universal number in the diffraction, it is the metric. And we're going to come back and derive that in the next slide. It is the fact that this geometric series, which we found in the diffraction pattern, is equal to this Fibonacci sequence. Here it is, 1 tau, 1 plus tau, 1 plus 2 tau, 2 plus 3 tau, 3 plus 5 tau. Each term is the sum of the two preceding terms. And the fact is that this series is identical to the geometric series. You can prove that by mathematical deduction. But now comes an important feature. This series is the sum of two series, which are also Fibonacci. One of them is natural, the other is irrational, because of the factor t. Now, we can approximately rationalize it by replacing tau by the rational fraction three halves, and then we get a Bragg-like function. And uh, if we subtract that from the irrational index, we get the irrational residue. And this has important properties. We'll come back to this denominator in a moment. The metric function, importantly and surprisingly, is the exact inverse of the metric that we derived independently, numerically, from the quasi-structure factors. And we're going to illustrate now that with the block wave. Well, what is a block wave? You can think of it as the lattice image in the two-beam condition. Look at the blue wave. It's commensurate with the unit cell. It's commensurate with all unit cells periodically repeating in the crystal. But it's incommensurate, look at the blue wave, with the uh, geometric intercepts in the quasi-lattice. However, if we stretch the blue wave by the metric function, we get the red quasi-block wave. And this is uh, commensurate with the geometric lattice. Uh, commensurate not only long range, but also short range. And it has some further important properties. But first, let me uh, point out that it is, uh, it is translationally symmetrical about these intercepts. The red wave is invariant under all translations a tau to the power m. And there's an, one further property we must look at. Count the intercepts between the cycles between intercepts. Five. And from the left, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty-one, thirty-four, this is the Fibonacci sequence that we saw in the denominator. 
So we understand uh, CS very well. It's the quasi block wave, as you can see, digitizes and harmonizes the irrational indices. And that's what we're looking at in uh, quasi Bragg diffraction. So we begin, can begin to sign up. There's Bragg's law, there's the quasi Bragg law. And here's theta. Theta is. Uh, the quasi Bragg angle is equal to the Bragg angle divided by CS. And here's the lattice parameter which several of us measured 30 years ago based on the Bragg law, which we now correct with the metric and the index. And the answer is very important it's 0 0.29 nanometers. And it's important for this reason that 0 0.29 nanometers is the uh, that is parameter for the uh, icosahedral structure and is the diameter of aluminum as it has to be measured, analyzed, verified and, uh, and correct. One word about this unit cell. The unit cell uh, has a cross section as shown in 15 different orientations. It's extremely dense. And the unit cell in diatomic crystals has this value for the ratio of the solute atom to the solvent atom. It's the same in all diatomic quasi crystals. Finally, to wrap up, R6 is not necessity. Harmonics are in diffraction and the same in quantized mechanics. To see the glass wave symbols, type pause, and the same for the reference. Finally, long range order is not disputed, but its combination with no translational symmetry is contradictory. Following the literature, Wikipedia does not mention the diffraction that is, as we have seen, unsparingly classical. Is this because myth-making big science follows Gresham law? as in the time of Galileo and Giordano Bruno, you remember Gresham's law, bad money drives out good. <laughs>